the Chicago Bears make the first signing of free agency. A new running back on their roster. It is DeAndre Swift, per Mike Garofolo, a three-year, $24 million contract. And we always want to take the guarantees when it comes to running backs. That comes from Adam Schefter. Again, three years, $15.3 million guaranteed. Just quickly, Hayden, before we get into the contract details of this, Chicago Bears are pretty much hitting a reset button on their entire offense. Mm -hmm. Why would they go and sign DeAndre Swift? Well, they have the fourth most money uh, in cap space, so they got to fill that somehow. Now, I am a little bit puzzled why they would want to make the one of the first moves of the entire free agency with a running back, and I think we'll get to it. I'm not sure how much better DeAndre Swift is than Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson, and this is $15 million guaranteed. The third year is probably completely unguaranteed. It's kind of how like the, Deon, uh, the David Montgomery contract works, for example, so I'm treating this somehow like a two-year $15 million contract Go ask the Panthers about Miles Sanders. I think Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift are fairly comparable players. Both obviously came from the Eagles. Uh, last year, they threw DeAndre Swift in a zone-based scheme. Yeah. That's what Shane Waldron runs, so there's a little bit of a fit there. But I think that some of the limitations that DeAndre Swift had going back to the Lions still exist today. So I think he's a committee back. I think that he kind of goes down in first contact a little bit more, bounces some runs a little bit more. Uh, but he is a fairly athletic guy, and I think that he will compete with Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson. First, let's put that contract into perspective here. As you mentioned, the two, let's say, second-tier running back signings just from contract perspective that were made last offseason. Miles Sanders, Dave Montgomery. Again, that is $6.3 and $6 million uh, annually on average. And the guarantees for each of those were 13 for Miles Sanders and 8.75 for Dave Montgomery. And again, now it's 15.2 here right. for DeAndre Swift. This is resetting that tier two running back market and ahead of when a bunch of the big names, mm -hmm. a la Saquon Barkley, are about to sign at the position. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does he bring to the table that's not already on the roster? You know me. I love Khalil Herbert's game as one of the most underrated pure runners in the NFL. But if we look back, he has barely been featured ever in the receiving game. I mean, this past season was his best, and that was 31 targets, 20 receptions, 134 yards. On top of that, the same regime, same regime in Ryan Pulse spent a mid-round selection on Roshan Johnson. Impeccable special teams player, but most importantly, solid and pass pro coming out of college and a pass catcher. I think that what he, though, excels in is winning on contact, and trying to bail forward for a couple more yards and breaking that first tackle. DeAndre Swift is more of like an out-in-space player, hopefully um, wins with explosive plays. Mm -hmm. Big difference in that role in terms of skills attached to it, but to me, this would significantly limit any receiving abilities that we could get from Roshan Johnson moving forward. And either he or Khalil Herbert then will need to specialize in goal-to-go short yardage situations because that, even dating back to the Detroit Lions days, has never been DeAndre Swift's MO. I mean, look at Jamal Williams scoring 20 touchdowns. Look at last year when him really not scoring short yardage touchdowns. And obviously you have Jalen Hurts on top of that. There's many layers to unpack here, but would you mm -hmm. would agree with a bunch of those statements? Yeah, no, I agree with all of that. I think that these three players have different strengths and very distinct weaknesses. I think that all three of them will have some action. Obviously, this contract means that the prices that people are paying an underdog right now, Roshan Johnson, RB38, Khalil Herbert, RB44, bye-bye. Those, those guys are going to go way down the pecking order. DeAndre Swift's the RB31. I would say this is a mediocre at best landing spot because of the other two guys that are on the roster. I think it'll be Caleb Williams as the quarterback. I've seen Caleb Williams take some of the goal line runs in himself as well. But all these highlights that we're showing right here, it's a lot of shotgun with Caleb Williams. Inside zone. Read stuff. Yep. And I think that you're going to get some of those uh, similar plays with the Chicago Bears. Real quick, on these zone runs last year, DeAndre Swift, he was the running back 33 of 55 in uh, SIS. They have a points earned per carry, which is like taking the EPA, but actually crediting it to the running back versus the O-line versus the quarterback. So mid-range zone rusher, right. I think that's kind of what DeAndre Swift is at this point. Caleb Williams will throw a couple screens uh, probably to DeAndre Swift throughout the season. He can run uh, some routes there, but I think it's just a lot of money to spend on, we're saying, a average rusher and i know you have to fill up the cap space and i think that's what you're going to sell yourself if you are a bears fan but 
Uh, he was a running back 46 of 59 in PFF grade last year. At the same time, I don't want to sit here and act like we are anti-running back like many people who do make football content on the internet are. You and I embrace running backs. In fact, we actually love the Dave Montgomery contract last year. And I think one avenue for teams to create explosive plays at the NFL level now are through the running back position. And maybe that adds value to them. Again, once we're seeing these cover two shells over and over again, that can be more difficult to do in the passing game. Now, the team that is probably doing that better than almost anyone else, the Detroit Lions, realized, hey, DeAndre Swift isn't the best fit in our offense, and we're going to upgrade with Dave Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. And all these highlights that you're seeing with DeAndre Swift, he's running behind Jordan Mailata, Landon Dickerson, who just got the bag, and Jason Kelsey, arguably yeah. one of the best centers of all time. And while the Bears are probably going to continue to invest in their offensive line, you don't have that same dynamic. I did mention those Khalil Herbert receiving stats. And some of that I think you can attach to Justin Fields. Yep. Um, now, you can also attach it to, you know, the offense coordinators that have gone through there potentially. Let's look at what Shane Waldron did just this past season with Seattle. Okay. Zach Charbonnet had 40 targets for 33 receptions. Kenneth Walker had 37 targets for 29 receptions. Uh, that is attached to three wide receivers. Tyler Lockett, 122 targets. DK Metcalf, 119 targets. JSN, 93 targets. I don't mm -hmm. think, unless we see a big move for a third pass catcher for the Bears, that we're going to see three 90-plus wide receiver target getters on mm -hmm. the Bears roster this year. It's just fascinating to me because he, he is an incomplete running back who will have to win in the passing game and win on explosives has clear flaws to his game. Yet it's so clear that the bears and maybe Shane Waldron, most of all believe that like he was the dude to uh, be the player to fill in, in this spot rather than go and attack it in the draft or cause you yeah. can kind of get pass catcher explosive guys with third tier for agency contracts or like the Eagles did last year trading a late round pick just to get DeAndre Swift for a season. This is a massive investment for this type of prototype. Yeah, I completely agree. And I also think that Caleb Williams, he's got so much of that playmaker gene. I'm not sure how much he's going to be throwing the ball to running backs necessarily versus some other uh, types of quarterbacks. So that's like another wrinkle here. So yeah, I think for fantasy purposes, I'm not, I'm not excited to be drafting any of these backs. I think that all of them have a chance to drop mm -hmm. in ADP. I think DeAndre Swift last year, Got a couple more touchdowns than usual. The receiving numbers did. I mean, dip. he really didn't, to be honest with you. What's crazy is he had five rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown. Wow, that's less um, than I thought. That's it. And wow. that was on 70 more carries than he had in any other year with the Detroit Lions uh, on the same number of rushing scores. Yeah. And then the receiving numbers, that dropped from 78 back in 2021 right. in just 13 games down to 49 targets in 2023 so you almost have to like combine the two aspects that he right. did with the lions and with the eagles to get like yeah. this money to be Make worth sure. it and that can be stretched but hey yeah. if it does work then this is going to be the most important back to me on the bears roster yeah. as we approach fantasy football drafts this offseason clearly even even if khalil herbert's underlying metrics make him one of the more underappreciated pure runners mm -hmm. in the nfl yeah and this is i think the deandre swift story going back to the receiving production a lot of running back receiving production is based off of the scheme. You kind of see that exactly right when he doesn't have the running back friendly offense, the receiving numbers get cut in half. So I think that's just a little bit of a uh, something to keep in mind when you're trying to translate running backs into new offenses. Anything we want to say about the Philadelphia Eagles on the other aspect of this? It didn't seem like they were ever mentions or rumors that they were going to re-sign DeAndre Swift. We've seen them, you know, throw in Kenny Gainwell in spots. Early free agency mentions that they are linked to Saquon Barkley. We'll have a video on wherever he signs. Obviously, when that does happen, that would be an epic long con payoff for Harry Roseman, who, again, loves mid to late rounders or small deal swap pick swaps or mm -hmm. small deals as the running back position versus obviously a heavy investment. But maybe this is the time to change in it. I think that this signing probably makes Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, and those type of backs feel pretty good because this is more money than what the running back market got last year for, I think, similar players. David Montgomery, DeAndre Swift, Miles Sanders. I would tier them uh, fairly similarly, and now DeAndre Swift made the most money out of all of them. Okay, that does it. Again, only 19% of you that have watched our channel over the last 30 days that sit here and consume our content 
have hit that subscribe button that are part of the family, the people that we actually love. So join that 19%, click the subscribe button, click the thumbs up. And as you know, every single free agency signing trade deal that gets made for one of the positions that we care about, we'll have an instant reactions video for you. We'll see you in the next one.